presented last Tuesday evening the annual Quest Medal at St. Edward University. The Quest Medal is given only to persons who, quote, show that they, like our explorer forebears, know the intellectual life as a quest for knowledge, a push against the outer boundaries of intellectual maps, a surge into the unknown. Dr. Salk, how long did it take you to discover the cure for polio? Well, I began working in polio in about 1947. And uh, the outset uh, began to uh, work in, participate in the program for identifying ambivirus types that were the cause of disease. In the course of that, uh, really building on the experience that I'd had earlier on studies on immunization against influenza, that led me naturally into uh, attempts to vaccinate animals and then subsequently when those efforts uh, proved successful we then began to explore the same idea in humans and uh, one thing led to another and by 1954 a field trial was put on and in 1955 Dr. Francis and Ann Arthur who had done the field trial reported the results that you know about. Have you been confident during the research that you would find a vaccine? Do you think it was just a matter of time? It was not a matter of finding. It was a matter of revealing what had to be so. There were a few unknowns, needless to say, which had to be established experimentally. We had to determine the conditions and circumstances under which um, our hypotheses were valid or not valid. And the conditions, uh, determine the conditions under which uh, the vaccine would or would not work. But that was largely a quantitative problem. Is an attempt to correlate research in the polio vaccine to current research to cure for cancer a fallacious correlation? I think it. I think it is fallacious to just say yes or no to the question. What are the differences then in finding a cure for the various strands of cancer? Well, cancer has many causes, and. Uh, uh, polio is much simpler in that a virus, in fact, uh, multiplies in the intestinal tract and by the bloodstream gets to the brain and spinal cord. And there, the problem is simply that of providing a blockade of antibody in the bloodstream that prevents invasion of the nervous system or uh, spread to others uh, in the population by the same means. In the case of cancer, uh, there, uh, the disease can be caused by viruses that may be latent and uh, not even in evidence in the cells that have been, been so transformed from normal to a cancer state. It can also be caused by uh, such chemical influences occurring in the course of cigarette smoking. Uh, X-rays, as you know, cause cancer and radiologists who first use X-rays without knowing of these effects. Do you advise people not to uh, use x-rays in excess? Or? Well, I, I don't advise, uh, but I'm simply observing that x-rays have, in the past, uh, produced these uh, harmful effects. Uh, everything to ex moderation is the answer to your question. What about cigarette smoke? Uh, I uh, believe all of the evidence points very strongly to that as being a very important cause of cancer of the lung uh, and the larynx, even the bladder, and uh, also, needless to say, a very important cause of heart disease. What about the man who just smokes uh, three or four cigarettes a day, even, even he is taking... Well, it's not a matter of thinking on my part, you see. I, I won't be drawn into giving you uh, <laughs> thinking opinions because the, the facts have already been established clearly that there is a relationship between cigarette smoking and cancer and that is a quantitative one in the sense that the more you smoke, the greater the probability of contracting the disease. What about skin cancer and the effect the sun can have on other Yes, issues? that's true, and that's a very good example of another form of radiation that can cause cancer. And it's actually an occupational hazard in a sense in farmers who get uh, skin cancer from, uh, from overexposure to sun. So you've answered the question in part uh, to the complications and difficulties of dealing with cancer on the same idea, on the basis of the same model, you might say, as uh, controlling polio. It will not be controlled in the same way.
they're likely to be, when there is a breakthrough, they're likely to be a breakthrough for one particular strand of cancer, one particular... Well, I don't think the word breakthrough is applicable in the same sense as it was for polio in, in terms of uh, simple some, uh, something simple, relatively. Uh, I uh, believe that uh, cancer will yield and be forced um, by uh, yielding small bits of information, all of which will eventually be assembled, and finally, by putting many parts together, it will be possible gradually to reduce the incidence of the disease. But you see, uh, when you ask me a question like this, I must uh, respond by saying that a very sudden and dramatic uh, disappearance uh, virtually of cancer of the lung could occur if cigarette smoking were uh, controlled or one was uh, found a way of eliminating the uh, cancer, lung cancer inducing part of that. So that it's terribly important to realize that man has at his disposal ways of uh, controlling some of the cancer conditions that uh, do not rely altogether uh, on scientists, so to speak, uh, to develop vaccines or pills or some other means for so controlling uh, uh, that disease. It's intellectually very challenging to find a way to bring about its control, but that's quite separate from the problem of its uh, control in this sense. Are you very sanguine about the possibility that the Salk Institute in San Diego might have some uh, information in the next few years? No, I, I don't have any such attitude. Uh, it's a very complicated uh, problem uh, to which many scientists throughout the world are going to make very important contributions. So happens that uh, this is one of our interests and one of our activities. And if we ask the right questions, we'll make important contributions. You have a staff of almost 300 mm -hmm. at the institute. Yeah. All of these people, scientists, engaged in bacteriological. Research. No, they're not at all. And, and uh, the word bacteriological is uh, not used very much these days because uh, angle you might say from the old days, uh, like they like to think of themselves, and they are in fact many of them molecular biologists, uh, people who work at the molecular level of the cell in an attempt to understand its fine structure and the uh, very um, esoteric changes in a sense that are associated both with normal development and uh, with the disease states. But in addition to such individuals, we uh, have others who, uh, whose interests uh, can be subsumed under the general heading of the Institute's interest, which is that of what we think of as control and regulatory mechanisms in living systems. And how does that translate into everyday language? In everyday language, uh, uh, it, uh, the mechanisms for maintaining balance or health. So that we're really interested in what is health and healthy functioning. Uh, we often learn about that from disease states. Uh, nevertheless, we think that for the future of man, it is important to have a deeper understanding of health, that this may then be augmented and not merely be interested in countering disease. Because it's possible to counter disease in a way by enhancing and augmenting health and increasing the margin between the healthy state and therefore the limit beyond which we might say then disease condition exists. What about Dr. Salk, the, um, the humanist, Dr. Salk, the philosopher? Are you optimistic about man's future? Uh, I uh, uh, would prefer to think of myself in a way as a long-term optimist and a short-term pessimist, perhaps. Uh, I prefer to not think in these terms uh, pessimism or optimism, but realism. I think man has choices. He has alternatives. And it's our job to identify what these alternatives are that man then may choose. I think uh, we are at a rather critical point of Man's evolution. Uh, what comes to mind at the moment is the Chinese um, ideogram for, for crisis, 
which is made up of two symbols, one meaning danger, the other meaning opportunity. And uh, just as we see danger at the moment, we also see opportunity. And we have, therefore, the opportunity to uh, look upon what we regard as dangers, uh, as challenges, to see to what extent our ingenuity can uh, get us beyond this point. You said at one point, Dr. Dr. Salk, you have spoken of external versus internal control and advocated that this is now a time when we might think about moving toward internalizing the control in society. Could you elaborate on what you're what I have, What I have in mind is the necessity for individual self-discipline as a way of obviating the necessity for excessive controls on the part of society. As we see evidences of uh, disrespect for authority, uh, which can be understood in, in an evolutionary sense as man continues to evolve, uh, then it becomes necessary to establish uh, control, so to speak, or regulatory or restraining uh, roles or functions on the part of the individual itself. And uh, this always been a goal though, and why should we be more successful now than Well, uh, I think it's more necessary. Uh, in the past, we've, uh, uh, man has so organized his societies that uh, uh, dominance and control uh, from the outside, so to speak, uh, has uh, been necessary. Uh, this uh, now uh, has begun to wane and to weaken in some parts of the world, and others are still excessive. What would you say? We uh, relied upon it in the past and it failed us at least. Uh, I would rather say that this is part of evolution. And in the things that I'm thinking and writing about, I'm attempting to uh, try to understand uh, the evolution of the control and regulatory function of our value systems, for example, and uh, realize that uh, we have to internalize our values and operate in terms of an internalized value system. Doesn't that also almost presuppose a very goodly natured individual? You must be of a feeling that man needs to have some innate goodness. With and he has both. He has both. And uh, it's simply a way of saying uh, is it possible to bring out the best in man? And that time will tell. When is your uh, new book going to be out? Do you have any word from the publishers yet? Yes, the, the first volume will be out in uh, this summer, August, September. And the title is Unfinished Man. Unfinished Man, yes. Mm -hmm. What about the uh, individuals who are interested in making contributions to research and uh, to yes. the of your institute? So we, uh, needless to say, are always in need of funds to help expand our research to normal Salt things. Institute, San Diego. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Salk, for being our guest today on In the Public Interest. I'm Bob Thompson, KDBC News.